Hello and welcome back to the channel! And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the 9 craziest storage war finds. If you're a fan of storage wars, make sure to leave a like on the video. Also make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when we release our daily videos. Now with all that being said, let's get straight into the video. Number 1. Renee's Antique Jackpot Goodness, this is so beautiful. Even if it's a remake, it's at least $200. These are all like English hunting scenes, easily $300. After an intense bidding war with none other than Dave Hester, Rene Nazoda and his wife Casey managed to win another locker that netted them an immense profit. The couple discovered that the locker was chock full of incredibly valuable items, including an endless procession of high value pieces that range from a beautiful grandfather clock in mint condition to a set of Baroque by Wallace collectible silver that was easily worth at least two grand, along with an oil canvas painting that came with paperwork stating that it was worth $8,000. The collection ended up including, among other things, pictures, model ships, artistic flower pots, and statues from places as distant as Africa and Asia, all valued at a minimum of $50,000. Rene has since claimed that it was the best purchase of his life. I guarantee you we're gonna get $2,000 for the set. I mean, look at all this stuff. We're like sitting in a pile of cash right now. Unbelievable. By the time we price everything and do a review. Number two, Kevin Sharktooth. Today I'm taking the shark tooth I found to fossil expert Gene Harris. This is a beauty, and this is a fossil. Kevin from Storage Wars Miami scored a major payday when he found a 20 million year old fossilized shark tooth in one of his units. The six and a half inch shark tooth belonged to a megalodon and, much to Kevin's delight, netted him a Jurassic payday thanks to its size and condition. After evaluation, it was discovered that the shark tooth was worth $2,000. This find proved to be among one of Kevin's luckiest and most profitable. I would estimate this to be a $2,000 piece. Number three, Renee Zoda's video game find. Hey guys, Renee from Bargain Hunter Thrifto here. By now, hopefully you saw the new season premiere of Storage Wars, and you know why I'm so excited. I'm gonna give you guys a little backstory. The first episode of season 10 featured another huge payday, this time going to bidder Rene Nezoda, who landed the locker for a meager $1,500. Nezoda, a self-proclaimed comic book hoarder, came across a seemingly endless collection of video games, video games, and even more video games. The collection filled up a large locker and was clearly assembled by a collector who knew their stuff. Throughout the very long process of adding up the seemingly endless collection of vintage entertainment pieces, it quickly became clear that this wasn't just a massive pile of surplus. With no duplicates in the mix, the dusty pile of memorabilia contained everything from rare Sega Genesis games to a rare copy of the NES game Bubble Bobble Part 2 that was worth several hundred dollars on its own. After the appraisal, the entire stash was valued at close to a whopping $66,000, earning Nezoda a small fortune in video games. Video. People get sick when they usually watch me anyway, it's fine. <laughs> like, that's why Storage Wars will only air two episodes at a time. Mm -hmm. Number four, Ricky and Bubba's gold gun. Gun collector, check it out. Well, what do you think? Well, I can tell by the holster right now, it looks old. Look at that, that's very nice. It's a Colt 1849. In the Storage Wars Texas episode, Raiders of the Lost Arcana, Ricky and Bubba were excited to have found an antique gold gun. Upon bringing the gun to an appraiser, the duo learned that it was a Colt 1849, dated back to the 1860s. The gun featured a faint engraving on the cylinder that depicted a Texas Ranger and Indian fight scene. The 150-year-old gun ended up being valued at about $25,000 thanks to its model and age. $25,000. $25,000. $1,000. We hit the holy grail! Number 5. Mary's Candle Holder. Howdy everybody! My name is Mary. When I start riding, things get hairy. You're not in Kansas, this is Texas! And I'm gonna hit you in the- Midway through Season 3 of the spin-off show, Storage Wars Texas, Mary Padian, who is known as the Junkster, stumbled into an interesting find over which she and her partner, Jenny Grumbles, got into a bit of a disagreement. The item in question was an antique candle maker. With Grumbles wanting to pop it on a shelf and shell it for 50 bucks, Paddyan wasn't about to accept that kind of petty cash though. She took it to a candle shop where the seller appraised the little unit at an impressive $1,400 at the least. 
The best came at the end of the scene, when the show's producers unwittingly revealed to Grumbles how much Padian had made from the Candlemaker, proving that in a storage unit, even the most unsuspecting finds can be worth some serious cash. This is cool! <laughs> Today, I'm going total zen. Treasures, trinkets, oh, oh, oh. Number 6. Daryl Sheets, Holy Grail. The trunk alone will bring 1500 bucks. That thing's worth at least a thousand bucks. OMG! All spawn toys! Risky ventures are nothing new to the bidding champion known as Daryl Sheets. He made a name for himself by taking on risks that many of the other bidders were not willing to do. Sheets proved his luck when he struck gold yet again by uncovering a storage unit that was stuffed to the brim with mint condition comic book memorabilia. The gambler invested $2,700 in getting the storage locker, and when he did, it was all worth it. He struck what could only be termed as comic book heaven, finding seven truckloads of comic books that were still in mint condition. Sheets fittingly dubbed the locker the holy grail of toys, as it contains an endless supply of G.I. Joes, Hot Wheels, and a whole host of other collectible dolls and toys, along with an absolutely massive collection of comic books, about 3,000 of them, which Sheets valued at approximately $10 a piece. The total kept rising as Sheets tallied up the mountain of collectibles, finally settling on a grand total that topped $90,000. It's gonna be really, really good. Look at this Thor. More Spider-Man. So cool. This is all backed and bagged. Somebody really cared about this stuff right here. We've got about 3,000 books here, so if I just go 10 bucks a piece, it's $30,000 right there. Number seven, Daryl's art collection. We just kept hitting Larry Bird basketball, baby. If you search for the biggest recorded find on the show, chances are one storage unit is going to come up every time. This unit was purchased way back in Season 3 by none other than Daryl Sheets, who is famous for his gunslinging bids that occasionally pay off and just as often leave him with next to nothing. But while the up and down nature of Mr. Sheets' haphazard bidding history has always been entertaining to watch, in this case, it was Sheets himself who walked away smiling. He spent a mere $3,600 on a locket that looked interesting, but not particularly special. Imagine the big shot's surprise when he discovered that it was home to a whole slew of paintings by Frank Gutierrez. When the proud new owner brought in an art expert to price the stash out, he was floored to find out that the whole collection was worth upwards of $300,000. While some disagree with the appraisal, according to the show's stated value, it remains one of the largest storage unit finds on record. I see all around this room. I would say that you have maybe about 300,000. Congratulations. Number eight, Jared and Brandy's Green Ladies. Perfect, plug it in. Let's try Voila. it out. Voila, hey. it lights up. How cute. Yeah, this is good, good find. These are only a good find if we make money. If not it had not been a good day for Storage Wars power couple, Brandy Pisanti and Jared Schultz. They thought that they hit the jackpot when they purchased a locker for $2,750, but after taking a look at the contents, Jared instantly assumed that they had made a big mistake. However, just when they thought that they were out of luck, a set of green naked lady bookends and lamps Brandy and Jared found in a dresser drawer ended up saving the day. The Arthur von Frankenberg mixed metal bookends and lamps ended up getting the couple another $2,900, bringing the locker's total worth to about $3,840. I think um, a pair of these would easily bring to the right collector $1,400 for the wow. bookends. And last but not least, number nine, Barry's model grand piano. He's there right now, spreading the story. What, what kind of law do you do? International. Yeah. While he wasn't particularly remembered for his huge paydays, Barry Weiss, known as the Collector, was a staple of the show during its early seasons. The retired antique collector was always entertaining to watch as he made his bids, took his chances, and often fell flat on his face. But just like Daryl the Gambler Sheets, every once in a while Weiss would find something worthwhile, as was the case back in the fourth episode of season one. In the episode, an oddball locker was opened up that seemed to be filled with nothing more than salon paraphernalia. Apparently dead set on opening up his own barbershop, Weiss snapped up the unit for $275. When he got inside though, he was pleasantly surprised to find a 1928 Marshall and Wendell piano. The value? 
between $10,000 and $12,000, netting Weiss a nice profit of $11,625. Not a bad haul, and certainly one of the cheapest deals on the list. And then I'll tell you what I'll pay. You got $2,500 for the lamp, you got $500 for the bulb. How about $1,500? Alright everybody, thanks for watching. Which one of these do you think was the most interesting finds? Let us know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Thanks, we'll see you next time.